Hello and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail. And I wanted to mention before I introduce my guests of the day uh, that we are, um, we are uh, uh, recording this episode uh, the Saturday before Easter, right in the midst of uh, all of this coronavirus uh, chaos that's going on in the world today. And, um, but I think that uh, what we're going to be talking about today uh, is going to be something that might help with our mental states uh, at this time, things that uh, um, you can do to help yourself that way. Thank you for coming on uh, again, uh, Bill and Diane. Uh, they're wearing their uniforms now, they, they wear them Every time they, um, they come on television now, uh, Greystone, Bat, Bird, and Butterfly Sanctuary. I, I say uniforms because they're wearing them every time to, um, to honor what they do. So thank you so much for coming on. And You're uh, we're glad to be here. And uh, speaking of repeating clothing, Bill and I both have the philosophy that the fashion industry is corrupting a lot of us and, mm -hmm. and doing some negative things in the world. We know about the Chinese girls with their fingers stained by dyes. the dyes they have to use and working the long shifts. So we deliberately don't try to upscale our clothes and we wear clothes down to, <laughs> till they're ready to go in the rag bag. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, just a private way of saying no, we don't have to be herded like cattle and, and mm -hmm. buy the latest fashion mm -hmm. and five mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, another thing that people can do, uh, if they're really trying hard to look nice, is they can go and shop at thrift stores Number and consignment one. stores where they can um, buy gently used clothing, clothing that's already been owned by somebody else, or they can have uh, parties after the coronavirus is, situation is over with anyway, where they can trade clothing. Mm -hmm. Those are fun too. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're big fans of both of those aspects. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead, you... Uh, um, All right, well, here we are. Um, what, uh, one of you, okay, uh, Bill was going to talk first, was it? I can speak a little bit here. Uh, I'm uh, Bill Moran. Uh, I'm a partner here with, uh, with uh, my wife, Diane Clark. We are a mom and pop operation, but uh, we do rely upon uh, college interns and uh, our board of directors um, will uh, help us out with uh, different events and projects that we have. I am the groundskeeper, I guess. That's my official uh, title. Um, I'm maintaining the trails. Um, I'm maintaining gardens. Um, trees that we planted. Um, someone's got to clean and set those outhouses up. That's me. Um, and uh, I also assist with programming and uh, some of the events that we have. Um, right now I'm working with a college intern um, on in, uh, clearing out invasive species oh, yeah. that we have up at Greystone. We have 72 acres and plenty of uh, um, um, wild honeysuckle, um, and uh, multifloral rose uh, is another uh, thing that we're, we're uh, trying to clear out. I'm also the caretaker of 10 chickens and one dog, hmm. which is a <laughs> part of what we do at Greystone. So. Oh, did you hear about uh, the two tigers at the Bronx Zoo came down with a coronavirus? About the one, no. yeah. Yep. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't good news. Well, so no. far our chickens are happy and healthy. And good, uh, good, good. I'm not sure they're maintaining the six foot distance, but they're... Our chickens are free ranging, as chickens should be. Yep. And uh, they get all organic rain as well. And they, when, we, when we do have visitors, they come flocking right over because they are guaranteed they're going to get a treat. So we have a very friendly chicken. Oh, and Bill good. takes real good care good. of them and the coop. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm the other half of the arrangement here at Greystone Nature Preserve. I'm Diane Clark, and I kind of get the title director. Uh, I do the business part of it, and I also do the 
educational part of it as a retired school teacher, I went into this operation. <laughs> Um, and I love it. I love bringing children close to nature. I love bringing adults, especially adults with disabilities, into nature because that's why we're here on the program. We believe in the healing qualities of nature. Some of my jobs at Greystone are to uh, organize and do what we call field days. So in May and June, we're usually loaded with school children from around the district and they come in the bus and their field day instead of being at a commercial enterprise is a whole day in nature with us. They can even roll down a hill of grass so they can feed the chickens and they get four environmental lessons along the way plus a picnic lunch right on the ground. Those field days will maybe not happen this year although we have bookings for them or waiting to see what will happen with the, uh, the virus and the social isolation. My other jobs include outreach programs. Because we're a not-for-profit in Ma and Pa, we appear at farmer's markets, we appear at different festivals like the Great Lakes Experience, mm -hmm. uh, to tell people that there is an organization up above Brockton that's offering the public a chance to do experiential education. Experiential education means that we want to give people an experience in nature. Bill and I, we don't do much um, naming of plants and telling all their fine characteristics. What we try to do is connect people with nature. Get that child to really look at that tree. The name isn't as important as getting a relationship with it. Can you climb it? How do you think it feels being out here in the forest? Who might be his best friends? Who do you think it's helping here in the forest? Questions like that we might have children pose and think about while they're around a tree or any aspect of nature. So we have our grounds which we try to keep for even for handicapped youngsters to be able to use the trails. And then we have an educational program. And that's all centered around our main philosophy, which is connecting people of all ages and ability levels to nature and maintaining the 72 acres as a nature habitat, mm -hmm. which, as Bill has said, it doesn't mean you just have to leave it there. It means that you have to remove the invasives and nurture the natives, native plants and animals that are there. So it's a, it's a load to do, but we definitely enjoy it. Okay, um, uh, did that cover your mi talking about your mission then? I think that's our main mission, connecting mm -hmm. people with nature. Okay. And then we might talk about um, one of our joys, and a, mm -hmm. it's like a secondary mission now. We didn't start out this way, but uh, we have been very fortunate in being able to work with interns from SUNY Fredonia, mm -hmm. and we have just come to really, really enjoy them. Uh, the two that are working with us right now are Alexandra <coughs> Nevis and Katie Lendon, and actually it is they who are going to be on this show. Today. Yes, Alexandria, yes. They're, they're both in journalism and public relations, mm -hmm. so how really good to let them have a live experience on a real TV show. Yeah. So we are the stand-ins for them today. Yeah, yeah they, we're only stand-ins. They stand were not scale. able to be here, <laughs> right. unfortunately. <laughs> right. I'm sure the viewing audience would have loved to have met them. They're mm -hmm. beautiful young women, and it would have been a great experience both ways, but we have to deal with this virus, and I, I'm almost apologetic that Bill and I are here in a way, Gail, because we have been very strong about keeping to the social isolation. We believe in it. Mm -hmm. We do not believe we should be forced back into jobs until we're really sure that this right. epidemic is right. over. Right. And we only ventured out today because we felt this message was really important. Oh, sure, that, sure. That 
first of all, that there is a nature preserve out there who's striving to get people connected to nature, and then that we all need to be out in nature. That's, that's one of our number one self-preservation things. And Bill's going to talk a little bit about our other <coughs> interns. Out of, okay. the out of the five interns that we do have, um, we also have a Rachel um, Isabel. She's uh, doing a butterfly garden and a pond study. Um, she's an uh, environmental science. Is she senior? Yes. Most of these interns are juniors and seniors, I believe. Um, we have an Adam Mills. Um, he's presently working on a newsletter that we're going to have online. Are we doing that hard copy also? Yes, there will be, and it will be connected to our website. He's designing all of mm -hmm. that. It's good experience for a business major to yep. figure out this advertising. And then, uh, as I'd mentioned earlier, I'm working with an intern by the name of Alex Richards. I believe he's from Long Island. <laughs> and, um, but he's staying local. Uh, during this, uh, this semester, and um, I believe he's coming up tomorrow, actually. We're going to be pulling invasive uh, plants, uh, namely the honeysuckle and the multifloral rose, um, and he is a GSI environmental science intern at, at uh, SUNY Fredonia. Um, so Bill's getting plenty of work outdoors uh, with this intern and with the chores that need to be done when you have a garden and you're trying to maintain a nature preserve. I, I consider it therapeutic. Um, much as this, this uh, situation with the virus has us isolated, Diane and I are f finding plenty to do at, at, uh, at our place um, as well as working with these interns. Um, well, you, the two of you uh, have been mainly staying home, is that correct? Yes, we've been very strict about okay, okay. the isolation. What have you been doing about groceries for yourselves? Well, we go out once a week mm -hmm. and get what we need. And if you forget to get something, we you do, do without. without. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. An interesting point of that, Gail, is that we have a freezer and canning shelves that are filled mm -hmm. with jars. Mm -hmm. uh, I decided a few years ago that I would start making soups mm -hmm. from our, we have the organic gardens so that kids have a chance to plant gardens and we both like to garden too. I mean, mm -hmm. who doesn't, I think. Right, right. Um, and uh, about three years ago, I decided that um, there was always an abundance of crops and sometimes we would give it to the uh, rural ministry or whatever. And then one year I just thought, well, you know, I could probably do this. And I got out my old canning skills and I have to admit, I also do a lot of freezing because it's so much easier than, than canning. all that hot water and those <laughs> big yeah, hot it, jars. It is easier to freeze than it is to can. Oh, it sure is, Gail. Right now in our freezer, we have about 75 different jars of frozen soup. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of this pandemic, Bill and I may be a little tired of soup and salad, but when you open a jar and you realize that all nine of the vegetables in that soup we planted, mm -hmm. most of them are from seeds that we kept and reharvested oh, because oh from we, um, what do they call those um, seed saver uh, heirloom. heirloom heirloom seeds, seeds. they're heirloom yeah, seeds yeah yeah our beans have come down for eighteen years wow our green beans. wow <laughs> uh, we yeah when when we're in programming we usually do a little bit of the planting with the folks from the resource center. Mm -hmm. So some of these are adults in, in daycare mm -hmm. and they come up twice a week and we'll have them plant things because again, we believe in the, the qualities of planting are so good for us. They let us know there's a future. They let us know that there are things we can do with our life. Right. And these young people have planted these beans and then every year we eat some beans of course right. but then every year they pull some of the extra beans and we wait till they dry uh -huh. and then they get them out of the shell and that's kind of a fun thing right and we right. put them in a special bag and we mark it for the 
uh, resource center. Mm -hmm. And then when you know, the next spring, we get that bag out and we plant them again. We do the same thing with peas. Well, you might be having to um, uh, do it yourself this year. I'm afraid we are. You yeah, know. I think so. We'll we just keep hopeful. And but like I say, I I would rather do it myself, and I would rather know that Bill and I will be back in our quarantined mm -hmm. house uh, as soon as this program is over. Right. Because you you we will really be. Do believe um, it. Uh, I really appreciate that you came over today to do this. Yeah. So. Well, we we felt it was really important. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you that though when we do have to go grocery shopping, um, we wear our masks mm -hmm. and we wear gloves mm -hmm. on those carts because how much can you spray of those chemicals and believe they're really going to work? I don't know. Maybe they do, but well, I'd just as soon wear a pair of gloves. Um, what I would like to discourage people from doing, something that Carol and I saw uh, at Wegmans about a month ago, um, somebody had apparently worn the disposable uh, gloves to do their grocery shopping that day. Uh, somebody who was parked next to us at, at the Wegmans, and um, when we came out of the store, we saw uh, two pairs of those disposable gloves that had just been thrown down onto the pavement uh, where that car had been parked next to ours. And I just want to say to uh, the viewing audience, if you're going to wear gloves to do your grocery shopping and then dispose of them right after, please at least have a container in your car, some sort of a container to put disposable stuff in so that you're not throwing it down on the pavement <coughs> because somebody who works there is going to have to come and pick it, yeah. pick it up. And if germ, you had the germs and they had to pick it up, then they could catch it from you, so. I noticed the same sort of uh, issue when I was at Wegmans. Are we allowed to say trade names? When we were shopping, mm -hmm. uh, the same sort of thing. But mm -hmm. you know, those might also be the same folks that are dumping their ashtrays and throwing their trash. <laughs> what, along the road, you mean? The Anywhere, even oh. in the parking lots, so. Mm -hmm. We, we might do a little segue at this point and say that Bill and I actually met about 20 some years ago at the Great Blue Hair and Music Festival in Sherman, New York. And we met while I was the recycling coordinator uh, at that particular festival. You don't just throw your trash away. You put it into one of eight different recycling or utter garbage uh, barrels. And so there's a real high standard for the people who are there that you don't use the earth as your garbage can. Right. But apparently yeah. that's what your friends at Wegmans <clears throat> did. Oh, I'm done. I'm safe. I'm going home. Yeah. They, I'll just leave they my They protected germs. themselves, yeah, uh, but a, didn't give a thought to anybody else. A real selfish <clears throat> attitude that is in our culture today. Mm -hmm. But we wear gloves and we, um, we dispose of them properly. Okay and uh, we wear masks and uh, the few times we go out and now we are relying on this huge freezer and shelves of tomatoes and other canned goods and we rather enjoy the si social isolation. We'd actually thought about downsizing some of our gardens but I think this is the year that folks are going to be planting victory gardens so we, we have plants under lights right now and Diane's actually got some lettuce in the ground it's growing as we speak. <laughs> it, it is amazing the lessons we've learned from the coronavirus. And one of them is not just self-sufficiency, but being able to adapt to the circumstances. Right, right. You know. And if we did have extra crops or produce, there's always a gleaning project or a, a friendly kitchen. That, yeah, that helps they've, they've take come them up. up before, yeah. Yep. So we, we are definitely avid gardeners, and we're going to go at it full steam again this year. Okay. Well, we were uh, talking about Greystone as an entity, and uh, Bill was talking about how much it helps him to get in the outdoors. Right. And he wanted to read to you, I think this is so important to have people here again and again. 
this, this is this, this is, is, is going to be outdoor about outdoor time. Yes, this okay. is right from the <clears throat> State Department of Environmental, Environmental Conservation. Conservation lists the benefit of simply being in nature. Um, it boosts the immune system. While we breathe in fresh air, we breathe in um, cytonites. I, I can't pronounce that. Cytonites. Cytonites. P h y t o n c i d e s. They are airborne chemicals that plants give off to protect themselves from insects. Phytocides have antibacterial and antifungal qualities, which helps plants fight disease. When people breathe in these chemicals, our bodies respond by increasing the number and activity of a type of white blood cell called natural killer cells, or capital N, capital K. Um, the benefits also are lowering blood pressure. Numerous studies have shown both exercising in forests and simply sitting looking at trees reduce blood pressure, as well as stress-related hormones, cortisol and adrenaline. Also reduces stress, improves mood, increases the ability to focus even in children with ADHD relevant to Greystone because many children will visit our, our facility. Um, benefits also accelerates recovery from surgery or illness. Also increases energy level. And I like this one the best. One of the benefits is improving sleep. Couldn't we all go for better quality of sleep? Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> when you are, do spend out, uh, time outside during the day, uh, you do sleep very well at night. There's something about it. I'm not sure if it applies t to being outside in the big cities, but out in nature anyway, if you spend time out in nature, mm -hmm. you sleep good at night. Mm -hmm. I put this in a little ahead of time, but there, there is a practice called Nigong. Nigong, mm -hmm. okay. It's done throughout most of Asia. Mm -hmm. And what it basically is, is walking barefoot on the earth. Mm -hmm. Now the, the ultimate experience is to walk barefoot around the living tree in a oh. circle and do it as a meditation. Is there a photo for that? There's, there, there might be a photo. There's a photo. There, oh, look there's at a that. Photo, look the, at there's that. a picture showing up on the screen right now. Just feel. Somebody like, in their bare feet in... What, what is that? Uh, They're the actually clovers. Clovers? Yeah. I kept looking for a four-leaf clover in the photograph, but I didn't see one. But this is a lucky person indeed. In our everyday talking, we often say, oh, I don't feel grounded, or that person is really solid and grounded. Do you ever think of what that really means? It means that they're grounded they're part of the earth. Mm -hmm. We're living on this great, big, huge structure, Mother Earth, and she has lots and lots of power. There's lots of um, moving energy on mm -hmm. that Earth, mm -hmm. and just by walking barefoot on her, mm -hmm. we're absorbing some of that mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, uh, terrestrial, um, terrestrial, um, Radiation, I think it's called, or something mm -hmm. exactly. like that, where uh, uh, Earth energy uh, comes up and empowers you. And it's true. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of smirk at it and say, oh, that's just tree hugger talk. But it's true. The Earth has a power of itself, and we can absorb that power. And one of the ways is with this nigong, just mm -hmm. getting your bare feet. I don't think we'd be in bare feet these days. No, so right no, now it's um, pretty snowy out there. T this Easter weekend is going to be a cold Easter weekend. Yes, yeah. it's a wet one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it surely is. There's another way to get out in nature. Of course, you can just garden or sit on your swing or. Uh, <laughs> sit under a tree or walk around the block, but just getting out in the power mm -hmm. of the air and the earth yeah. is so good. Okay, so this Nigong, people actually just walk in circles outside. Yeah, that's the perfected the meditation of it, that you would find a, a living tree, and you would, of course, welcome the tree into your practice, mm -hmm. and then you would slowly walk around the tree 
and in your bare feet mm -hmm. and be feeling with those feet what was really beneath you. All that energy, all that huge mass, that terrestrial power mm -hmm. that's there. And you could do it as long or as short as you want, but the idea is that you and nature are interrelating that way. There's another practice, and that's called forest bathing. Forest bathing, yes. Kara Seeking spoke about that. Did she uh, mention it? Good. Yeah, she spoke about forest yeah. bathing in, on one episode that she was on. Well, we're going to bring it up again because <coughs> we think it's that important. Mm -hmm. We came out here just to try and get people to see other ways of being outdoors. Mm -hmm. So forest bathing, uh, Shinrin-yoku. Shinrin-yoku. Shinrin means forest in okay. Japanese and yoku means bathing. Okay. Shinrin-yoku is done in Japan. As easily as we play tennis, people would understand forest bathing, mm -hmm. Shinrin-yoku. It's not taking your camera into the woods and getting that nature shot. It's not putting on your hiking boots and seeing which trail you can go on. Mm -hmm. Shinrin-yoku means you take in the forest as it is. And you, Bill was just talking about all the chemicals that are exuded by trees. Mm -hmm. They're protecting themselves with these antibacterial chemicals. Mm -hmm. And you are able to breathe them in, living live whole. Mm -hmm. We were saying how everybody's squirting their hands with antiseptics and things and antibacterial lotions. And yet it's right there in nature. Mm -hmm. If you just go out and breathe in some of these foamies and um, chemicals. Mm -hmm. So yeah. forest mm -hmm. bathing is another way of, of really getting the benefits of nature directly into your body. There's a, an outline that you can follow. A lot of people like to have a little script when they go in the woods because it is almost a foreign place to us anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, the seven steps I want to just briefly go over are that before you get out of your car, and walk on this forest trail or walk in this park, wherever you're going to expose yourself to nature, set, set an intention. Why am I doing this? Is this for my health? If you just say that to yourself, it plants it in your brain. And you know your brain is connected to all the rest of your body. In fact, every single cell is connected to every other cell. So if you set an intention, that I want this walk in the forest to bring me better health. Your whole body is getting that message and hopefully co cooperating with you. Or it might be a message like, um, I want to stop worrying about money while I'm here in the forest. And so every part of your body will put up a barricade and say, let's not do that. But setting an intention, why are you going into your forest bathing experience is important. And then it's recommended that once you get, approach your forest or your path, whatever, that you deliberately make a threshold so that you consciously are aware that you're going into another experience. You're leaving the car world, the everyday world behind. I'm going into this new experience. You can do that as easily as putting a stick on your path. Say, when I step over this stick, I'm leaving that behind and getting into my forest bathing. It could just be a tree that you pat on the way. Any, any way that gives you a threshold into the experience. And then once you're over that threshold, you want to be able to embody the experience. And uh, Bill, you want to talk to them about dropping in? Um, dropping in? The yeah. term, term <laughs> dropping in? Um, it's a term that we also use uh, in, uh, in uh, surfing, um, surfboarding. Um, I first heard about it uh, when I was 16 in uh, spend a summer at Daytona Beach. Um, dropping in is when you get on that board and you paddle for your wave. It's that moment when you can feel that wave actually take you. Once you're done paddling, you can get up on the board, and that's the dropping in where you can drop right into that wave. 
And that's what you want to do when you pass your threshold. You want to drop into the forest and embody the experience. Get your eyes and your ears, your sense of smell. Get them all engaged in that experience of being out in nature. I know there have been times when, um, you know, I've been out in a beautiful place in nature and sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a medication, meditation kind of unintentionally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you sit down, but it is so beautiful where you're sitting and you can just feel uh, the good vibrations mm -hmm. from the beauty around you that it just, you, um, I guess the best way to explain it is uh, it, it makes me feel blissed out. Cool, yeah, <laughs> you know? great. Uh, Dropping like, in like and you're in a, out. You're, it's like, you know, being in a state of bliss. You know, one thing that really puts me there is listening to the spring peepers. And mm. we're at that time of the year right now. That is oh, my favorite yeah. sound in the whole world. Really? Uh, yeah. I like moving water. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I, that's when nice I'm walking too. in the woods and I hear a creek. A I or a stream. Stop. Yeah, the mm -hmm. stream flowing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's dropping in and walking in awareness. And also, I should say the word walk. When you do this forest bathing or wherever you get yourself outside, see if, because we're all under so much stress and anxiety, see if you can't slow yourself down into nature's time and walk at a leisurely pattern instead of the hike, hike, hiking we all feel we have to do. Now maybe you're an athlete and you want to get outside and build up your body, and that's important too. But what we're trying to talk about today <coughs> is using nature more to help you through this critical time in our mm -hmm. world. So if you're outside and you're walking, you're again being able to absorb what's around you, and that creates a good peace of mind. Mm -hmm. I've noticed there's not very much traffic on the roads these days. Isn't it days. amazing? No. Uh, I've never seen anything like it, you know. I know, it's, it's really refreshing. <laughs> you know, it's like, no rush hour. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible to, to witness it if you just happen to be on your way yeah. the, to the grocery store or whatever, you know. Um, you, you, people are not going to their doctor's appointments. Their doctors are calling calling them up on their phones or doing appointments on Skype or something, yeah. you know, I mean. And <laughs> we're all aware of the effect that that is having on, on the ozone. Right, The effect right. that there's less CO2 going, huge amounts of less CO2 going up. The, right. the scientists are just having a heyday saying, oh my goodness, this is all voluntary that these people are actually right. slowing down climate I, change. I have, I have to admit, people are, are just being wonderful, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, most of them. Most you of know, us want to live. You know, uh, they're, they're really uh, uh, actually making it a point to yeah. uh, do it. I wonder if when this is all over, this would be the good side, that people start thinking, did I really need to run out and go get that thing? Because most of the time when we go out, it's to go out to buy something or go out to dinner. Do we really need to do that mm -hmm. and use that extra gasoline? Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. people will start measuring that. They're measuring how much toilet paper they use. Oh, you know, I, I really do wish that people would quit the hoarding. It's uh, because it's my experience that I, I can go, when I do my grocery shopping, I can go and not find what I normally can ha have always been yeah. able to find when I mm. go to the store, yeah. uh, when because I'm getting just because I'm getting low and ha not having it there, and not only not having it there, but not having it there week after week after week after week, and you wind up doing out without completely because somebody else has bought it all. Mm -hmm. Don't you think these times bring out the best and the worst in us? It seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People who are just totally centered on themselves mm -hmm. and what's going on. Well, you had mentioned we're still in our forest walk. Right. And you had mentioned the sit place. Mm -hmm. And that's another good thing that Bill and I were recommending to people. Just go out in nature and sit and mm -hmm. absorb what's out there. Mm -hmm. and, and 
take in all your senses again of what is going on. But you can come home feeling refreshed and relaxed and ready to take a little more social isolation. <laughs> so um, that and being open to the infinite possibilities of what happens when you're on a walk. It, instead of just saying, oh, I'm going to walk from here to there, just take a nice slow saunter and notice the leaves and the trees. If you see something scurrying, take a minute to watch and see what it is and where it's going and open yourself to all the possibilities of what a walk can bring to you. And then when you conclude it, maybe after a nice sitting time, cross over your threshold again with intention and within yourself resolve that you're going to let that walk be a part of your everyday experience <clears throat> and refresh you the rest of the day. And then you can go back to social isolation and all the tasks that you made for yourself while we have this extra time. I have something in here that I wanted to read that I just saw on the rest of this. Okay. Um, it says that being a part of nature is especially important during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. It says, despite that many public events, restaurants, etc., are closed, we are encouraged to go for walks and spend time outdoors. Um, being in nature is therapeutic and a natural medicine. It's a beneficial stress reliever. And this is especially important during these times as many people are fearful of this virus and are looking for some type of relief. Um, going out in nature is perfectly okay. And doctors are saying it is very beneficial at this time. Fresh air is beneficial for our overall health. Many people may start to feel anxious being inside so often. Thus, why going for walks, hikes, etc., is a great way to find relief. Yay. This current issue of the Nature Conservancy magazine had a wonderful article about some folks in the Chesapeake area. And they're, they've been planting trees in urban areas that were treeless. And they're going to have a chance to actually measure if these trees have had an effect on people. I believe it's um, 700 trees have been planted over a five year period. And what they used to just kind of guess was a correlation between having trees around you and not having trees and the positive aspects that they bring. They're now going to be able to actually have a link that by doing the study of all these people over five years, that if there is a change in behavior, they can attribute it to the change that these trees have made. So this is really <coughs> important. I'm, I'm glossing over a lot of the facts of how they're doing this. But if this turns out to be right, and they can actually find the link between trees and people's mental health, like, you know, it may mean that your doctor will prescribe for you being outdoors. Go hug yeah. Being around, you know, I prescribe <laughs> that you walk around trees. Go hug a tree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, I, I actually have heard of some uh, doctors doing that, like, uh, as far as uh, eating a good diet goes, I have actually heard of doctors who prescribe to their patients watching certain DVDs that talk about eating a good diet, the diet that's best for your health and things mm -hmm. like that. So, And maybe they'll start to say, just get outside for a while. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you uh, were going to mention to the viewing audience uh, places in Chautauqua County where they can go yes, to yes, be we, out in nature. Mm -hmm. um, I have a list of just made up ones, or ones that just came to me. Uh, one of my favorites is the Rails to Trails. We have a mm -hmm. wonderful network of trails from the Rails to Trails Association. <coughs> Where and trains used to. Yeah, the trains mm -hmm. used to be Travel there. on. And now yes. they're, they're beautiful tracks. You, there are maps. Almost every county map has it on. You can uh, see them where they cross major roads. They're, they're well marked. Uh, you, we have the computer. You can look it up with the computer and find the Rails to Trails near you. Mm -hmm. Get out of one of those and just take a nice hike. And then there's the north-south uh, 
County Trail. That's a beautiful trail too. I like it. There's a parking lot just outside of Mayville on what route is that? Three ninety five. The well, road? there's a route. The is going to Mayville. From Mayville to Sherman. What is that it's road? Four thirty. Four thirty. Um, along that road, there's a beautiful parking lot, and that's an exquisite part of that trail. It goes into some beautiful pines, and there are little bridges across little creeks, and oh, it's, it's also beautiful. the East Overland Trail, which is uh, in the Fredonia uh -huh. um, Arkwright. Mm -hmm. There's an overland trail that goes from Panama to Westfield, or yep. to the gorge, I think it is. Portage yes. Trail. Yeah. Yes, that's, so. the, that's a good one. And, uh, you know, there's Lake Erie State Park right near us. Mm -hmm. They're staying open, mm -hmm. and I believe they close at 4.30, though, mm -hmm. get their employees home early. Don't forget Long Point. Oh, Long Point, if you can get yeah. out to Long Point. What a beautiful scenic place to just be outdoors, it's certainly worth it. And um, Point Gratiot. Point Gratiot in Dunkirk. It's yep. very close and yet you just get that on the beach and, and, and a, that park is lovely itself. Um, there's a lot of seabirds around that park. There's Audubon down in Jamestown. Their trails are staying open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, the watershed, our wonderful watershed conservancy Mm -hmm. They you, again. You can use your computer to is find that, out. Is that the one on the Lions Road? I believe outside there's of one there. So. Yeah, it's a 22-acre mm -hmm. um, piece of property, and it's gorgeous. Really gorgeous. Um, you know, Gail, they're protecting a thousand acres of land for Iron? us in the county. Yes, waterlands that are vital to all of us right, in our county alone. Right. A thousand acres put aside for nature and for the rejuvenation of nature. So you can go to your web and find out which of their sites are open to the public. And um, a lot of them have parking places and well-marked trails. So the Watershed Conservancy is offering that. And then there's the whole shore of Lake Erie. A lot of times you can go down to Lake Erie and find the uh, Point Gratiot is one of them. One of our favorite places to go is the, um, the beach at Barcelona. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a great place to walk. Good place for picking up beach glass, too. Yep, that's, that's a lovely. <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, you know what Bill likes to go there for? <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time this morning he's mentioned the beach, beach glass. glass. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny. One of the times we had to go out, I guess I had a doctor appointment in Westfield at nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so Bill loaded up our dog and our dog loves to play in the water. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'll go down, you know. Actually, my appointment was 8.30. 8.30. So at eight o'clock, and it was a cold, windy morning. Mm -hmm. But you know what you brave for your animals or your pets. Yeah. So Bill said, oh, I'll take her down there and let her play and catch a few sticks in the water and that. And he goes down there and he, he almost knocked the socks off because there's four or five people and they're all bent over. There had Picking been a storm. Yes, yeah. that early. Early birds. <laughs> and, and bearing those conditions, it's oh, quite the hobby. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of those, I've seen where some artists um, combine beach glass uh, with driftwood mm -hmm. uh, to uh, make works of art. Yep, that's, that's a beautiful thing. We enjoy the beach glass jewelry mm -hmm. as well. There's um, a few uh, um, uh, folks in the county here that are making uh, jewelry right, out right. of the glass. Yep. There's, a, there's a couple of ladies that sell it at the Chautauqua Institution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the Women's Club uh, Afternoon Craft Market. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the institution draws people from all over and they go, oh, they never heard of beach glass before. Really? And it, really? it's so oh common to us, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess maybe a decade ago, I never heard of beach glass either, maybe two decades. I didn't, I hadn't heard of beach glass. I never thought of looking at it in the ocean and didn't recognize that it was there all over our lake beaches. Mm -hmm. I have to admit that I have uh, uh, several mason jars full of beach glass that my family picked up down in the Van Buren area, mm -hmm. probably back in the mid to late 60s. Mm -hmm. so. Tell them what we do with it. What do we do with that beach glass? We offer it as a token to anyone that comes up um, to our place 
um, for an activity that chooses to use the uh, old school Amish built outhouse. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> they, they get a bonus if they can find a handle. Mm -hmm. We tell them, look for the flushing handle in the outhouse. <laughs> and some of them look. Some of them look. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, you wanted to talk about an Earth Day celebration uh, that you're planning on having at Greystone. Mm -hmm. uh, tell our viewing audience about that. Okay, so on Earth Day, we're going to have a virtual Earth Day celebration. Number one, we were going to just have one at Greystone, but with social isolation, it doesn't seem very feasible. No. I, I really do want to go along with those mandates. And uh, we decided, well, we're still going to celebrate Earth Day because Earth Day this year is 50 years old. Yep. Can you believe oh, that? Really? 50 years ago, <coughs> people 50 years. realized how precious our planet was. That was when I was 20 years old. I know. Uh, 20 years old. It was a different world. Yeah, yeah it sure was. And it, it caught on, mm -hmm. and it's been celebrated ever since. It's too bad there's a squisher on it today with these little mm -hmm. germs out there. Well, Virus. you do, do what you have to do, I guess. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're going to have an hour-long celebration. It will be on Facebook in virtual time from three to four on Earth Day. And we'll have a cake, and uh, Bill will be playing some music. But you two are gonna be the only ones eating the cake, right? Yes, and our camera person <laughs> is going to. Going to it. have some, um, too. And, um, well, if anybody stops up, they certainly can have a cake. We're gonna do a cake and cupcakes. A cup, so oh, cake anyone, and cupcakes. If anyone, now, um, there was this plaque that you wanted uh, oh, brought yeah. to the attention of the viewing audience. Uh, we're, we're down to about 10 minutes is why we've got to get around to okay. it here. Uh, oh, it shows up real good. Boy, oh, that's my gosh. the best ever. Greystone yeah. Nature Preserve, Excellence in Internship Advancement 2020, uh, Fredonia Career Development Office. So. Isn't that something? This was a first. You must be so proud. We are. We have to <laughs> you know. This is about our seventh year working with interns yep. from Fredonia State. Is that how long and you've been doing seven it? Seven or eight, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I taught elementary school and I did teach at Penn State, but I've never taught where it's such a one-on-one -on -one experience as with these interns from SUNY Fredonia. So they come and um, when they sign up, they get one credit hour for 40 hours of their internship. And Gail, that can be anything from writing papers about invasive species to actually pooling them. Mm -hmm. uh, we once had, uh, one of my favorite stories is a, a young lady who was in set design. So there she was at Fredonia learning about set design. Oh, I Theater. think you told me about her last year. Oh, I, lo uh, I love She's this. the one that wound up uh, having a job running a chainsaw? Yeah, she that? ended up as a forester because <laughs> she, what do you do with somebody who wants in set design and you're running a nature preserve? Well, we had her design three different trails, oh. one for handicapped, one for a deep woods experience, and one along a ridge that would have our medicinal plants. Oh. And to do the medicinal plant one, the way she thought it should be, um, she had to saw through a tree that had fallen. And the college just loved that they could graduate someone and say that they went way beyond the usual college experience of learning how to use, and you never know when you might need a chainsaw. Oh yeah. And yeah. actually she did go on. Another we, girl planted an organic garden. Oh yeah. And for her final paper, she gave her college supervisor a salad. Oh and my And she gosh. didn't know a thing about gardening when she came. Oh but she gosh. learned the seed, she learned companion planting, she learned about composting, mm -hmm. building the frames for a raised bed. What a great thing to go to college and come away with a sustainable life skill like that. Yep. Did yep. you want to say something? Just to touch back on the, <clears throat> on the intern that uh, I taught how to use a chainsaw, uh, we received a postcard from her about a year later after she'd graduated and she was working for the Forest Service and what was she doing out west? Building trails. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Was it just 
a set design student. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Change, that one changed her whole life yeah, around. Good, yeah. and, and we hope we leave a mark on every intern because we thoroughly enjoy it. We just, um, and, and this has been very interesting <coughs> with their home and they're running an internship with a nature preserve that's hundreds of miles away and yet we've been able to do really good experiences with them and, and give them, and I, I hope the next crop that will be interns this coming fall will still sign up with Greystone because we know we can offer them good experiences. Mm -hmm. Well, your picture oh, yeah. of uh, Lake Erie, is it? Mm -hmm. um, just showed up on the screen there. Um, do you want to say something about that? Uh, that would be Point Gratiot. Point Gratiot? Unless it's Van Buren, but I, I think I'm pretty sure it's Point Gratiot. And there's a seagull in the picture. Yeah. I, guess the, I don't guess, I know the point of that picture is to encourage people to just find a spot in nature and hear the waves. Even that is so therapeutic mm -hmm. to, as opposed to sitting at home and mm -hmm. being in anxiety mm -hmm. or, being, or feeling alone. Mm -hmm. Get out and then, nature. And then you get to see wild animals when you well, get yes, out in nature. Yes, it's that, you know, it's that it's it's unexpected, the infinite possibilities of what you expose yourself to when you just get out of your house and get into nature. Yeah, it's like you think, you say to yourself, well, I'm going to go for a walk in the woods, and you're just thinking about the scenery around you and then and then some deer uh, like uh, a little earlier a few weeks ago I remember uh, seeing two adult deer um, I guess I must have spooked them or something I didn't know they were there and all of a sudden they were running and uh, it was like I think it was two does and this cute little baby <laughs> fawn <laughs> I, you know, it was so tiny. It must have been a newborn. Wow! You yeah. know, it was uh, it was so cute to see that. And uh, we saw our first towhee today. Your first towhee. Uh, Eastern towhee is a bird. Oh, okay. At our bird, bird feeders. So oh. again, those are the infinite possibilities of what you can see in nature. And then, oh, uh, well, it kind of got spoiled, but. A couple days ago, I noticed uh, out behind our house where bloodroot, uh, a plant called bloodroot comes mm -hmm. up every year. It's that, do you know what I mean? Yep. The, the one with the white flower, that red liquid comes out of it if you pick it. Yeah. And uh, I had just noticed, I think it was like Thursday morning, I just noticed, oh, it's up. It's up, you know, how nice. And then... Um, and then it snowed later that <laughs> morning, you know, <laughs> just right at the time. And now we've been getting snow since uh, as soon as the blood root came oh, up. Yeah. It only we, blooms about a week. You yeah, know. and then it's gone. Yeah, yeah but yeah. It, it's such a harbinger of spring. Yeah. We had up on the screen the back of our business card, I think. And Gail, that's just about what we're talking about now. Oh, yeah, Look yeah. Look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. Albert Einstein. Just think about that. You know, that just connecting with nature can help you understand your whole life and all the other principles that go floating around. The other side of this business card is our Greystone Nature Preserve information. And mm -hmm. you can find us with emails, with, on the website. That gives you most everything. And we're on Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter. We invite people to give us a call. Our trails are also open, Gail. That's one of the main things oh. we came out to say. Oh, yeah. We've yeah. opened our trails a whole month early. Bill manned the tractor <laughs> in the cold weather and moved the barricade a week ago. And it, it's our attempt to help people to get out in nature, to open a little bit more of wilderness for people to enjoy during this pandemic. Oh, okay, so they can come out to Greystone. Yep, come You're allowing the those in spite of... Early, in spite... In spite of the coronavirus. Yep, keep okay. your social distancing. Remember to wear good shoes. 
uh, take a flashlight with you just in case. In case you and get lost yeah, and wind and up there if, after if, dark. If the dark comes in, <laughs> that's always a good thing. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. even if you have your, your cell phone. Well, you, I know that a couple of times we've had the Vegetarian Vegan Society has had our annual herb walks out there. Mm -hmm. We unfortunately had to cancel our April dinner uh, mm. because of the coronavirus. Uh, course, even if yeah. we'd wanted to try, the YWCA in Westfield, mm -hmm. where we usually have it, is closed, yeah. uh, you know, uh, till further notice. And, and, and there's one of those examples where I've been to the vegetarian and vegan feasts. Right. It's, right. it's the food that's wonderful, but it's also the camaraderie. Oh, 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 yeah. to not be oh, surrounded yeah. by people talking about good food. Right, it, right. I don't think you can just duplicate that with gets the food out the window and say, oh, this yeah. is good food. It, yeah. it just wouldn't go over as well. But we're definitely advocating get out on trails. Get out and breathe you know. fresh air. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Breathe fresh air. And when um, you think this little bugger boo, that's where it goes to first is into our lungs. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we should be getting our immune system working. By and, breathing fresh mm -hmm. air. Mm -hmm. um, I feel bad for the people who have a history of smoking, you know. Yeah. The, uh, I could show you a whole stack of studies also that give the benefits of sunshine. Now, we're not oh, getting much sunshine today, but, no, but there'll be our sunshine days yeah, will be coming. There are, mm -hmm. there are benefits from sunshine, definitely. Just plain old sunshine. So here you have Nigong grounding, just walking on the earth. You have forest bathing, opening your emotions to the quiet and the peace of the forest. There are two different ways to really get it, sunshine fresh air, all of those are benefits of getting outdoors in this really critical time. Mm -hmm. Critical time. Critical time, yep, yep. Um, well, we're coming to the end. Was there anything else you definitely wanted to mention before we go off the air? <laughs> Bill, did you? Um, um. Only that we feel that we feel that as elders, that it's a responsibility that we have to to pass on, particularly to the younger generation, to, of these things that we know that we found to be true um, by being in, immersed in nature and in outdoor activities. Yeah, and I'm, I'm when you do your forest bathing, you're also supposed to say. Thank you to the forest when you leave. Oh, thank you to the and forest. I guess yeah, since yeah. we held that plaque up, I guess if I had a final message, it would be thank you to SUNY Fredonia University oh. Oh, because yeah. they've stood behind yeah. us and encouraged us and right. helped us learn how to be good teachers for the interns. So yeah, that, yeah. That would be my final word. Thank you, staff and students at Fredonia. And thank you, Channel 5. Uh, for what used to be did. Channel 5. Oh, no, it's not Channel 5. 1301 now. 1301, yeah. 1301. Yeah. Access. Go strong and go well into the future because you're helping people stay connected. Right, right. Thank I'll you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, thank you thank to both you, of Gail. you. And I'll see the rest of you and the viewing audience on the next episode in a couple of weeks. So.